walking around J.W. Evans, you're walking through a time machine. It's like they've left yesterday, both kind of Victorian and 1990s at the same time. I think it made me consider the historical classicism that was associated with silver. We're really excited to have the contemporary artist Dion Kitson exhibiting here at JW Evans and showing us the work that's been inspired by this amazing factory. Dion is not that dissimilar to Jenkin Evans 120 years ago. He was a really skilled artist. He went to the Birmingham Art School. He was producing hundreds of designs every year. We took over in 2008, and the reason English Heritage was so excited about it is it stayed in the same family through three generations. And rather than getting taken over and things getting thrown away, it's all here. My name is Dion Kitson, and I'm an artist from Dudley in the West Midlands. I work across sculpture, painting, film, poetry, do a bit of fashion. There's a lot of subject matters that are about lived experiences of growing up in the black country. I always think it's quite interesting when people ask me, um, why do you make work about working class culture? It's the only language that I know. A lot of my work is about the simplicity of objects and the narratives that they can produce and the emotions that it can evoke. When I was at art school, I wanted to make some jewellery and on the doorstep of Birmingham School of Art is the jewellery quarter. One day, lunchtime, walked over, found a place that could make me jewellery and then fast forward a couple of years, I was working in the jewellery quarter making jewellery. Very silly things like monster munch rings, pound coin rings, kind of grew from there. The exhibition is called Silver Lining, which is an ode to Hi-Ho Silver Lining by Jeff Beck, which is the football song that is at the start of the Wolverhampton Wanderers game. It's the first song I ever learned to sing. This is great. What do people do when they're at work? How do they make work kind of more bearable for them? And this guy's kind of stood here for about, I don't know, 20 odd years, cutting out pictures of Aston Villa. Creating like a huge shrine to his, his pride and joy. Well, seeing as that it's a Aston Villa room, I thought I'd put um, Steve Bull in the middle of this room. Steve Bull scored 306 goals for Wolverhampton Wanderers. Growing up, I had a season ticket for Wolves from the age of about four or five. Um, and if I wasn't an artist, I would have been a, would have been a footballer. You know, there's a trophy cabinet in football. These are kind of my trophies. There's nothing better than finding an old football. Oh, look at this one. You could eat out of it. I think the objects speak for themselves. It's a really good representation of a lost dream. You know, how many footballers are in the world? There's not many. Within J.W. Evans, I kind of joked that there was a scrap of metal that looked like the Tin Man. And, you know, the mechanical work of the Tin Man. Tin, metal, silver. Tin Man, me. Growing up Wizard of Oz was quite important to me because it was one of my favourite films, favourite stories. It kind of leaks through my work at the moment. We cast my head in plaster and then I've meticulously carved the rest of it, painted it silver, stuck a funnel on my head, and uh, Bob's your uncle. I like that people can see everyday objects in a different setting, and for them to come and visit JW Evans and then have this kind of artist who's dropped objects around. There's a new dynamic to their tour. It's about taking a throwaway item, a disposable item like the Nos Canister craze, and turning it into sort of a semi-precious artefact. The kind of punchline of the piece is that if this was disposed of, nobody would ever think to pick it up. Cradle. It was just taking the office item, like the Newton's Cradle, which is like a businessman's executive toy, and then just kind of parodying it with these 
NOS canisters that are dumped everywhere in car parks. Newton's third law. I'm passionate about talking about different dialogues and I think that in the black country in the West Midlands where we've got these kind of talking points that we stick to about how heritage, as an artist that has grown up here, I kind of want to talk about it differently. The jury court is full of good characters and the people who are kind of polishing and the people who are making now are probably going to be the last in Britain and there's probably not going to be any more like them and talking about that's important. Mm -hmm.